Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let's call the meeting to order. Please rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do you may have roll call, please? Here. Here. Yes. Chasky. Here. Fullerton. Here. Walkerly. Here. Time is absent. The mayor is out. Uh, Councilman Pathanas is not here. Alternative Beatrice is not here. And over, uh, oh, Phil Obert is not here. Dave Rowan. Here. Mr. Pettit is excused. Thank you. Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act has been given by the clerk in the following manner, posted on the bulletin board in the borough clerk's office, email, retrospect, and the courier post. First order of business will be the approval of the minutes from the September 10th meeting. Do we have any questions on the minutes? We have a motion for approval? Second. Okay. Um, Mr. Opperly, seconded by Mr. Dickinson. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right, under new business, so we have a Mr. Sweeney from uh, 101 Evesham Road for a temporary permit to sell. Mr. Sweeney here? I don't see any. Sorry. Okay, Mr. Sweeney is not here, so we will move forward. Um, if he comes back, we'll see what happens. Okay, we want to take this opportunity to um, go over the second draft of the home businesses. Uh, I asked you to get extra copies. If you don't have a copy, Keith, do you have a copy of it? The revised, the revised, the revised one? Well, is, he, is, he, is he here? No, you're naked. Oh. <coughs> we can pass it. It's the same gentleman from every year? Hey, I thought, yes. I thought he was coming in to ask for it, and it doesn't say that. Uh... Yeah, he wouldn't make it. Well, I'll tell you, Mom said the planning board did this last year. Right? Oh, sure. And in previous years, he used to come to the council, and we found out that it was improper. He, that this was, a, this was a correct board. But he didn't have an application or anything? There was nothing that? formal. I think it was just that no, it was we never did for council, I don't believe, last year. I think all we did was this. Well, it is land use. Yeah. No I would just instruct uh, the key then to just give them a temporary permit. Yeah. You know, what is it, 60 days for Christmas trees? That's it. Things allowed to do 30 day grand opening signage. Yeah, all that I mean, type of stuff. Done it before and never borrowed it. It's probably at least his fifth year. Exactly. Yeah, and, this is, and just for your edification, this is the Anthony's Water Ice. Um, property um, on East Sham Road, if you're not familiar with that, that's where he sells his trees. Oh. Okay, well, I can read into the minutes just for everybody's edification. Uh, running planning and zoning board, I am writing to request a temporary use permit to sell Christmas trees on my commercial property located at 1001 East East Sham Road, Hornaby, currently occupied by Anthony's Water Ice and Ice Cream Shop. We are a seasonal business and are closed from mid-October through mid-March each year. I would like to request the temporary use permit for the following date, November 25th through December 25th to sell the trees. The lot will be secured with temporary fencing to prevent the theft of the trees and keep everything contained to my property during this period of time. I believe this will be the fifth year in which we have done this. We have not had any issues to date and no complaints from neighbors. We keep the place clean and have normal business hours. Operation, nothing too late at night or out of the ordinary. Please feel free to contact me with any questions. Best regards, Mr. Sweeney. So, um, without objection, uh, I make a motion that uh, Keith go ahead and grant uh, Mr. Sweeney a, a 30 day permit to sell trees. Is it 30 or 60? Well, it's, he's asking for 30. Okay. Yeah, that's what he's asking for. He said, I think November 25th. That's correct. Yeah, and Keith will just put that on the uh, permit. Okay. okay. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Okay. Okay, Mr. Knight, um, we have approved Mr. Sweeney's application for a 30 day permit to sell trees between the dates of November 25th to December 25th. 
Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, so we should. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Now, if everybody has their copy of the revised home business uh, section that we wanted to go over, we can open it up for discussion. Does everybody have a copy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure, Joe, did you have an opportunity to go through it? Do you have any? Well, the first one I was on number two. I think that. We know what? Why don't we do this? Why don't, why don't we go down it like we did last meeting, um, one by one, and then whoever has a comment on that will we'll all kind of interject. I have one suggestion, Bert. Yes, sir. Uh, the the land use book says shall, and my copy is made of right now. I think maybe we should have that as part of the application. So shall is a mandatory requirement, and may is a permissive action. Okay. Mm -hmm. I that's, that's, that's so the shall is, shall is mentioned is. in most all of them, but there's right. one that says may. Okay, no, that's a good thought. Thank you. So, Mr. Ryan, you'll do that. Which, uh, Dick, where was May yet? Uh, one well, May was uh, right after April. April before June. Before June. June. So <laughs> number 11. 11, let me see what we got. Why is it shall? Yeah, why is it shall? shall. Delivery shall, shall be left Oh, okay, 14. Yeah. I think it should be made there. It's permissive action. And shall, oh. shall be permitted to part. Maybe. Okay, I mean, yeah. Well, open for discussion. We'll be getting Okay. Yep, we'll get discussion. I think you also I'm have the most of what maybe get like it is. Yes, Mr. Knight. I think you also have May in number four. Mm -hmm. No, May, it's up to May means. Well, you're the, you're the attorney, Dick. I mean, yeah, I mean you know, it, 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 it's, it's limited to two people. Two people, may or shall, whether it's, it's may or, or shall. Or you wanted to say. It's limited to two people. It's limited. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. So it doesn't make any difference on the legal side. The legal side. No, it's, it's two. It's two. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So, under home businesses, um, a, a home business shall be permitted, a permitted use in all residential zoning districts subject to the following conditions. Number one, the gross area devoted to the home business use shall not exceed the lesser of 250 square feet or 10% of the total gross floor living area of the residential property. The area devoted to the business must be continuous. I think we'll, do we all agree upon that? I think we agree upon that. Sounds good. Okay. Is there any question over I'm sorry? That leaves open the question of Barrage, which I think is addressed later well, the storage on. storage is really laid on, I think. Right. I think it's addressed later on. Yes. Yeah, then there's submission. The home business shall only be operated by the record owner of the president's dwelling. Do we all agree upon that? Yes. Number two, the home business shall only be operated by the record owner of the dwelling. Is there any concern? I know this what Nathan always say, because I think, yeah, what if he's renting the house? Or what, what, what if he's a renter? No, excuse me. What if he buys it for the sole purpose to run a business out and he doesn't live there? Should we make it? I, mean, I know this may be getting weeds. You know, should he live in the house that he's? But I, I think, think we said he should. He should live. So it should be his primary residence. Oh, that's only where I by the record. I think if we require a renter, it shows what space is going to be where and what that it permits the code. So we change record owner to resident. Resident, yeah. By the resident. I was saying primary, but that might be easier because they living there. Now, the rent, uh, so an owner then could lease his property for a home business. Well, he we leases home. No, he's got to be the rep. But it, it, the record owner has paper. No, he's so he operated by the resident. Oh, you, uh, oh resident owner. You want me to resident owner. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Resident owner. All right. Resident owner. And that gives it a paper trail because everybody's got a property yeah. record. Yeah. So we're changing record, record owner to resident. To resident owner. To resident owner. So we're all in agreement to that. Number three, the home business shall be conducted entirely within the primary dwelling or any other accessory building located on the same lot 
and only one such use shall be conducted on the premises. Do we all agree upon that? Number four, no more than two clients or patrons may be on the premises for business or professional purposes at any one time. Agree? Agree. There shall be no display of products visible from the street, nor shall any article be sold or offered for sale on or from the premises. Agree? See. <laughs> The residential character of the lot and building shall not be changed or altered. No sign identifying or advertising the home occupation shall be permitted. No more than one non-resident, full-time or part-time employee shall be permitted. No sounds emanating from the home occupation use shall be audible outside the residence. No equipment shall be used which will cause interference with radio and television reception in neighboring dwellings, nor create other nuisances in its operation. Delivery shall be limited to package services such as United Parcel Service, Federal Express or other recognized delivery service. Page two. No additional off street parking shall be generated by such occupation in excess of one automobile. Okay. No business shall be conducted at the site before 8 a.m. or later than 9 p.m. Only one business vehicle combined with a trailer, if any, not exceeding 8,000 pounds registered weight shall be permitted to park at the residential property. There shall be no outside storage of any kind related to the home occupation. Uh, home business. Say a pause for that 13 for a second. Keith, do you know what our current ordinance is for work during the, the borough? Is it when do we allow construction to happen? Is it seven? Seven a.m. I mean, what do you guys? Am I wrong with thinking about that? that it is nine. Nine sounds late. And eight sounds late. No, I'm not sure. Well, I think I think seven is too early seven myself. Seven is too early. I mean, I don't even know cut grass without guys to put signs. Yeah, but that's, that's crazy. They do it. I don't. I'm just saying, as a courtesy of my neighbors, I don't put my grass in. But I mean, it's in conflict with the other ordinance. You see what I'm saying? Like, this, this is conflicting with the other ordinance. Yeah, but, it, but it's, it's a special use. It's special for that. Home, it's a home. Home. Yeah. As opposed to us Right, right. I mean, if you have a farm and trees, I have to start on that right here. Right. That will start until 9 o'clock. Yeah, we're, we're talking yeah. about a residential so area. This is not, not workers going to the house. Yeah, okay. I think I think they keep the neighbors happy. So they don't conflict with Keep it eight, eight What's the ordinance say for? Yeah, yeah. Uh, does it say nine o'clock? Ordinance or? Do you want to hear what it's at seven to one? I thought it said seven. 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 Right, yeah, we just talked about that. Well, we got late, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're not going. Okay. So I'll just throw a roof on a bike and pull it up. Right. That was the noise. Oh, okay, the noise. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. Number 16, all home occupations, occupation uses shall specifically maintain solid waste containers which shall comply with the following standards. A, the container shall be watertight and of metal or plastic with a tight fitting cover and handles. Each container shall have a capacity of not less than 20 gallons nor more than 40 gallons and shall not exceed 50 pounds when containing solid waste material a volume of solid waste generated from the home occupation together with other residential solid waste shall not exceed. And that's why I think we're going to have one. I think Del Rian had 10. That's our current. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a lot. I mean, 10, that could be 10 receptacles. <laughs> so and Del Rian has 10. Yeah. That's what they need. 
But our ten is ten is what we're allowed. Oh, it is ten what's allowed. So we have our residents. So I don't know if we got treatment. Make it ten. Ten. Make it ten. Ten. I'm going to change that all home occupations. No, sixteen A. Ten. 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 Oh, we sixteen at the top would <coughs> change occupation and all home business. Okay. Okay. All occupations should be changed to business. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Now, is that ten in addition to the ten residents? Yeah. Ten total. Um, the number sixteen that has the word outpatient. Yeah, that should be. Set. Yeah, we just changed it. Yeah. The volume of solid waste generated from the home business, together with other residents, right? That means shall not exceed ten. That's so that would mean if you have three from the residents, you can only have seven. seven. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are we good? Yes. Okay. We're good. B. Family daycare homes are permitted as per provisions of the NJSA 40.55D-66.5 A E T S E Q. C. Prohibited home occupation. The following uses are specifically prohibited as home businesses. Auto repair, refurbishing, or servicing. Retail or wholesale of goods, equipment, chattels, fixtures, materials, supplies, or any other merchantable item. Three, restaurant or other food distribution or sales. Four, tattoo or piercing. Five, psychic readings. Six, massage parlor. Seven, firearms repair. Eight, boarding homes. Nine, any other form of business which are specifically prohibited in any commercial district. Sales are actually made over eBay, and they would just maybe pick something. That's up the courier. There. That's using the courier. Yeah, we're using a courier. That's a, that's a courier yeah. or the FedEx Express. Yeah, we, we, no, we say we're permitting them to use UPS, FedEx. Right. I mean, suppose I'm, I'm selling. One thing we. Um, I think it's the limits. I think if someone starts getting pallets brought to their house, I think that's going to be the trigger. Yeah. As opposed to I know what you're saying. Somebody who sells some old fishing rods on eBay is not. Well, why don't we why don't we put down that retail or wholesale of goods on site, yes. which which would oh, which okay. would kind of say you can't come onto my property and buy my old fishing uh, reel, right. but I can mail it. Oh, we're back to um. B two. B two. So we'll do B two also or any other version. Merchantable items come on site. On site. And that will let everybody know. <clears throat> now, boarding homes, that's iffy because you know, the state does have permitted for group homes, but. Well, can we, can we put a little caveat on there or we don't need to wait? No, I'm going to put that on. It's really prohibited and if right. somebody you know, will address it. Everything here is conditional anyway. Everything in this is conditional. So if somebody has a special need or something, they are going to be able to come before us and say, I have five acres. I need to. I need to park three vehicles. One, yeah. One thing we briefly touched on the last time we spoke about this was four area ratio. If somebody puts a home business that reduces their four area ratio for human habitation, right. it's going to change the. But that's why that ten percent is in there because it's the lesser of the two. Right. So if he's got a little five hundred square foot home, he can't take up more than ten. Well, I mean, we have we have uh, four area ratios in the code for each for each one, or one, or two, or three. Typically, though, you take a home a home business would probably well, use just, it as a you know a, a, as a residential use anyway. You know, is it his inconvenience? He's living with it. Yeah, right. Sure. But and as I say, so he might have a television where he has his desk where he yes. works. So it's, he's still using it as a residence. So it's a lesser of the two of ten percent, more than two fifty. So. I mean, this is you know, I think are we going to require a, a rendering on how much where, where it's going to be in the house? Or just, well, yeah. 
Oh, there would be an application. Yeah. There'd be an application yeah. and square foot to be. Uh, Keith's going to be uh, monitoring yeah. that. And yeah. 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 For the must, we must register with the clerk of Borough Runaway. So after it's adopted, run you, Keith or somebody's going to be getting. Yeah, you're right. We need an application yeah. form. Yeah. I hear you. We have to create all this A registration fee will be required. Um, the construction code official or zoning officer of the Borough Runaway shall inspect the premises, okay? If they comply with all that, they don't have to, I added your A, uh, when all the requirements are met, those site plan applications shall be required. If they're not, they gotta apply to come before it. I'm sure the first guy comes in here, we're gonna win. If you win some sort, not on this. It always happens, it always happens. Now, I would, I would uh, tend to 20%. Yeah. Now, Dave, I don't see anything here as to where they're gonna be issued a permit. And I think we talked about that we talked about issuing everyone a permit and having, and having them sign off on it. Uh, mentioned before, before this is a registration fee, but where is they must register with the clerk. That yeah, that's gonna be like the, that the permit process. For a permit. Yeah, I mean okay. so a we're permit gonna, that comes to there, we must register yeah. with the clerk. So, so they'll like, get their piece of paper that right, says yeah, I'm here's good. my permit. So there we're gonna have to devise a uh, or if the borough wants me to uh, do an application or work with Keith and that, or if Len wants to do yeah, it, no. doesn't matter to me. We'll have an application, description of the property, description of the business, you know, yeah. okay. we can yeah. even ask for a rendering of where it's going to be Control located. Control your property shows yeah. the yeah. Of So can we change that line in, in number 10 to say all home businesses, number one, business uses, must be registered with the clerk of the borough of Ronnie and apply for a permit? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So let's say registration will be required. Your registration must, must and be. permit. And, and permit. permit. Which clerk? Um, well, they're going to they're register yeah. with the borough clerk. Right. That's the borough okay. yeah. But a registration the fee and permit will be required. The construction borough. official. Uh, be, uh, so you're going to change it to borough clerk. So it's, it's not like construction clerk. All homeowner uses must be registered with the clerk of the borough. Okay, fine. Yep, yeah, I see. Not, not, I see. With you. Yep. But the mm -hmm. registration fee and permit and will permit. be required. And I can put it in an application made to the zoning officer or whatever you want me to put in there. Well, I got a question with that for a second, too. If Keith is his, his office and your office is going to be the one that's enforcing why would the why would the fee not be collected very similar to a CO there? However you want to go. Can you have any input on that? Do you think it should be? Come on, man. Well, it's, 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 not a, it's not a yearly, it's like a CO. This is going to be a market deal thing. I didn't think this was for, I thought this was for like a, you said there was no fee. The market is still something we got to work out. It's very similar to this. There's no fee. We're not looking for a fee. It's not that, but you still need some mechanism. We don't want money. Well, we want. I think there should People. be a registration fee because remember, Keith or Chris have to go out and inspect. physically inspect. Okay. Yeah, we should have that. I mean, well, that's fine for something small. I don't want. To, I don't want to. No, it's not to generate. I don't want to generate money. I'm no, not looking to. You don't want it every year. Yeah, it's just not, no, it's not right. year. Yeah. One time. Well, like a CEO, right? Yeah. CEO's done yeah. once and you're done. One time, inspect it. Yeah. Make sure we're talking about that. Yeah. So okay. all home, it must be registered with the. Planning is only board. I'll tell you how you can end it. Just say that she's the construction code. Permission is not transferable. Right? I thought so many places that are not money. Well, let's do this. Let's let's work out the. I want to I want to adopt this tonight. I want to set it up to mayor and council for adoption, and and then. Then, we, we, work, then, then we can work out. Can say, well, this is what we're doing. We can we're work out. Some, to, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Joyce. Yeah. Joyce. Yeah. Joyce. not here. Joyce isn't here. Yeah. Right. That. That everybody. Well, even the way you all just work that out. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I just, I, I'm just well, redo it. Like right I don't see a lot of activity. It's not. It, this is just for tax people. That's what it's for. This is going to be a complaint driven. Complaint thing. driven. This is going to be complaint driven. If people are going to come and complain to us, we're going to have a piece of paper. We're going to have a piece of paper to go to them and say, Mr. Smith, you came in here, you signed this permit, you said you're only going to have one vehicle, and you have four. 
and it's against the rules. Right. We're going to have a signed document that says you're you're out of bounds. You're going to get cited, and we're going to take care of it. And Mr. Jones next door is going to be happy because we have a, we have the control apparatus in place to take care of it. It's a complaint driven type of thing. Nothing else. It's not for revenue. It's not for anything but to protect the residents. That's all it's for. And I think it should be a one time. You come in, you register, you get inspected, you get your permit, and you're done. It's not transferable. Once you sell the house, somebody else comes in, and they got to start over. If they want to, if you have a, you know, a landscaping business and you sell your house, and the next person wants to have a tree trimming business, well then they got to come back in front of us. It's not transferable. Doesn't doesn't go with the title of the property. I'm going to put in there We're that it is, it is non transferable. That's it, okay. right there. And we'll put uh, the, the registration fee the and valid. there will be no uh, annual, annual fees. No annual fees. Should we make a recommendation as to how much that fee should be? I think we should find out what it's going to cost us to handle it and, yeah. and just cover the cost. I don't, we're not here to make money, but we do want to cover okay, the cost. Of, of the employees going out and having to do what they have what's to do. The, what's the well, what's a CEO? The CEO is much more. What's a CEO? And that's a lot more. And a business is a, a business CEO is one of them. And that's a lot more. Fifty bucks. Fifty dollars is reasonable. Yeah. I mean, it's it's way reasonable. Now, fifty bucks is way reasonable. Yeah. One time. It's a one time. Price. Like so a I think fifty dollars would would hopefully be fine. Fifty dollars. Yeah. It would probably. Fifty dollars in this fee, which we do not enforce currently, is only like ten. Oh, right. But that was only to say a commercial business moved in. And really, Keith was just saying you're permitted use because you know many people rent and then they don't go. Or they don't. Yeah. And, and it was also designed to make a list for the police department and everybody mm -hmm. to see who's who's where and who's contacts. We just and June is right. We lost track of it when we didn't designate who was supposed to enforce it. We, we passed the law, but then didn't have the right. enforcement. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll put a an application and registration fee of fifty dollars will be required. Together with a permit, and they can one time, one time, yeah, but one time transfer on the application fee will be uh, reviewed by the construction okay. officer or zoning officer who shall inspect the premises. Right, and and issue the permit, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Anything else that anyone wants to add, track? No, I think we successfully beat this to death. Yeah. I think we did too. No, no, I appreciate everybody taking it home with them. But it was something that was missing in our borough. Right. Yeah, so you're plugging a hole here. You're, okay. Yeah, that's All right. right. I'll entertain a motion on the floor for adoption to send up the mayor and council for adoption. So moved, Madam Chair. Okay. Mr. Dickinson, Mrs. Gushin, a roll call, June? Yes. Dickinson? Yes. Alderman? Yes. Gushin? Yes. Pachowski? Yes. Thornton? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll revise it and send it to uh, <laughs> Okay, you'll send me a copy. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Great, great job, everybody. That was, uh, I know you all took it home last month and we went over it and took your time up, but it helped make tonight go quicker, and I appreciate that. have a couple things on my report to just kind of uh, put out there to everyone. Uh, Primo's now has a new owner. His name is Joe Coyle. And uh, he seems to be, I met with him uh, last weekend. He seems very proactive, wants to be proactive in the community. Um, he wants to join the Rotary Club. He's going to come to the JFK Club meeting tomorrow night, I believe. So I wish him all the best. Um, we have a new owner of Peach Cafe. That's going to reopen, as I believe RIP is. I don't know what their timetable is. They haven't come in front of us for any type of site plan right now. I believe they're keeping the same footprint, and they're just doing a tear out of the interior at this point in time. But that is a property that is long overdue for um, an update. So I'm looking forward to. Uh, it seems like they're an exciting group of people, and um, that they're going to do a real nice job. So that would be a, a very welcome. Um, addition to the Black Horse Pipe. Um, Mr. Knight, I just wanted to ask you, um, have you had occasion to visit the, the uh, old Penny Green property? I was by there a couple days ago. 
And there's a sign out there that says all the block and um, materials. materials are for sale. And it would appear that he had a, a very large like flower bed type of thing where someone's been taking the block. I can't imagine he sold those blocks. But it looks like that is ready to come apart and go out onto the sidewalk and, and be, be an issue. I know Matt isn't there anymore, so I don't even know if Matt knows about it. I, I think that that bank owned, I believe. The, uh, the property I turned over to Public Works, mm -hmm. what was happening was, uh, from my understanding, through the realtor that was handling the property, that his wife was handling the sale of the property. Okay. After several attempts of notices sent to the address that was provided with me uh, in Glendora, uh, there was definitely a problem with the mailing address, and they were not received. Okay. She indicated to the realtor who responded to me, indicating although she's handling the property, that Matt was more or less responsible for it, but was unable to provide an address for him to contact him to and take some action on the property. Ultimately, I turned it over to Public Works to maintain the facility okay. or anything. So okay. it's really in uh, their hands now until such time. So it's Public safe. Works, or Public Works should be handling that? Yes, handling it. Because it's, it's, ready to, it's ready to let loose right right there. I mean, it, it's, it's just this high. And there's there's no retaining wall. The retaining wall's been taken away. And if we get a good rain or something, I think the whole thing is ready to let loose and, and be a, a public hazard. So what I will do is I will contact Mr. Ritz tomorrow. Okay. And have his group Even if they shore it up with to go out with there. boards or something, it's I think a good rain would just have that whole thing just collapse out onto the sidewalk and, and cause the problem. Sure, it presents a significant hazard. Yep. I'll find out with it. What All right. The status of that is, but it Thank you, Mr. Right over. I guess back during the summer. Too. Okay. Yeah, I just can't imagine that they took that out and just left it. I mean, it's this high. It's not like a little foot, it's, it's high. So. All right, well, I appreciate looking at that. I mean, I appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Okay, do you have any old business? Here's one item on old business. The uh, council, uh, the last council meeting, last week, we did introduce a sign ordinance, a first reading. Uh, basically, if you remember, when we were dealing with both the sign ordinance and the townhouse uh, ordinance issues, we had hired uh, uh, Bach Associates to give us a draft. So as you already know, we, we finished the land use the townhouses, the drive-throughs, the outdoor dining. So we did first reading for that. What I could do for this for this board, because obviously first reading doesn't mean anything until we do the second. Uh, I can get everybody copies. Now you might have seen it. It was about 20 some pages long with definitions. If, if it had any comments, we can make amendments yeah, to it prior to the second and final reading. But the reason kind of pushed <coughs> going forward was we needed to get it already kind of paint for her to, to write it up. It gives us something, it will start to allow for uh, limited use of grand opening banners, flags, things like that. It'll restrict some of the things where we've been having problems with uh, too much signage on certain properties and we just know standards for any of our signs. Well your next meeting is on the 11th, our next meeting is on the 12th, so you're going to have your second meeting on the 11th before we will have occasion to discuss with you. Well I'm just saying, if, if, and the third meeting is for a final adoption, right? No, it's only two meetings. Only two meetings. So what I think we should do is if we're going to if we're going to ask our input, being our meetings the day after your meeting, I think it would be you know reasonable to ask that you put that second meeting off do that. until we have the occasion to digest. As long as we can adopt it by say December, you know, right. it'll be great. It, we just we can't get the stuff. And my attitude is always if we do something and it's not quite right, we can go in there and we can we can tweak it. Yeah. This board does things that does permanent stuff. Yeah. Council can, can adjust. Would it be okay to, uh, to uh, have a spread amongst the members of the board? Yeah, I thought everybody had a call. That's what, I'll make sure you get it again. That's what, they, what we want to do is instead of instead of mayor and council doing the second and final reading at their next meeting of the 11th of November, they're going to postpone that until the December meeting of mayor and council. So that we can distribute a copy of it to all of our members on the 12th of November. Yeah, well, I'd like okay. Just jibble it a little bit. So yeah. We'll so that way, on the 12th of November, I mean, unless you know, we can get even sooner than that, and we can discuss it. But we're not going to have the second reading of it until we have it in our hands. 
Okay. Where was it published? Yeah, in the retrospect? Well, it hasn't been published out because uh, oh. its first reading, it's only read it as title only. Okay. So we only read its title, and it wouldn't be until the second and final reading that it would be advertised in court of law. And you uh, come from law. Oh. And you come from law. But my point, and I, I know this sounds, I, I've been known to do this, and it's good and bad, obviously, is the push. Because if I get on the agenda, it starts, to, <coughs> the clock starts ticking, and hopefully we act on it. Just let everybody know we, we passed a, a, grease, or a grease trap ordinance, if you weren't aware of it. Uh, the borough had an incident where we had a, a pump station that was just overly uh, inundated with grease, which caused a failure. And one of the things that was recommended to us was to pass a grease trap ordinance. Now, obviously, that was discuss, commercial only, right? Our commercial only. only. And what it does is it gives the uh, borough the enforcement ability to go out and, and look at buildings to make sure that they are cleaning the buildings <coughs> out, making sure that uh, it's not, you know, to try to help it. There's no fees, there's nothing like that. It's just a mechanism first to kind of keep people from uh, you know, dumping too much. Um, June, because this is a 20 page document, could you possibly send it electronically to everybody that does do electronic mail and put it in the mail to those that don't? Because I don't think we're going to have occasion in 15 minutes to read over a 20 page document. And then, and then the definitions alone are. There's more that's available. I'll come and pick mine up. Okay. I don't do electronic. No, no, June's going to get it to everybody that doesn't do electronic. She's going to either mail it or she can call you guys and come pick it up. Right. Because on our next meeting on the 12th, I don't want everybody to try to digest a 20-page document and, and talk about it, you know, that any degree of intelligence. So we're going to have all the things to do that three-page document. Right. So <laughs> we're going we're to get those hopefully within two weeks. I'm sending it to you right now, Mom. Okay. So everybody with electronic will have it, and everybody else will have it within two weeks, and then we will put that on the agenda for discussion on our November 12th meeting, okay? Any other old business? Communication, a notice of application of the Friends of Israel Gospel Ministries Incorporated public hearing before Denver Planning Board, October 8, 2014. Not sure what that has to do with us. It's just that they didn't invite us because we were running this around the town. Okay. I received a receiving file. Uh, they did send us a uh, NJ uh, PO regarding membership, which is basically a an association that if we join it, uh, it costs us a membership fee, which I believe for a single board is three fifty a year. Uh, what I asked June to do was to look into how one of really the only benefit to us truly is that it gives us a discount for the edification of new members. When we sign on a new member, they have to go to a one day class and we get a discount on that one day class. But if the discount doesn't, you know, quantify for the $350, doesn't really make much sense to, to do it. I think um, everyone on this board is on the board for a while. The alternates, I believe, are one-year alternates, but I think everybody else, if I know everybody else has been to classes, so we shouldn't need to send anyone to a class other than if um, one of the alternates has, decides to step down or something. So at this point in time, I don't know if it's worth the 350 But June's going to look into it and she'll let us know her thoughts. Uh, good and welfare at this point in time. I'd like to open the meeting for the public. Anyone wishing to speak on any matter, please come forward and be heard. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Eugene Smolinski, 100 Schubert Avenue, Rugby, New Jersey. I attended the meeting last month and uh, I submitted drawings and paperwork to June and I was wondering. Uh, where that paperwork went or where the situation with my next door neighbor sits. Today, uh, let's see, I went to the municipal court with him and thanks to Mr. Knight, today I had tree people knocking on my door to take care of the tree that's been laying in my yard for three months. Uh, although they cannot repair the fence, that's not what they do, so the next door neighbor has to clean up the tree and then repair the fence. But I also wondered what was, they wondered what was gonna to happen to all the trees that are leaning and falling and covered with ivy. And I said they'd have to take that up with my neighbor. But I was wondering what would happen with between the property lines with the ivy and the trash and continues to grow. Can you 
Keith, what did uh, Judge Trabi say on this matter? Well, what happened was, is, as I uh, reported last meeting, uh, I charged his neighbor, Mr. Maziotti, uh, with not uh, removing the trees. And, and Mr. Solinsky indicated we were here on day night. And we agreed to a 30 day postponement for the trees. And then he's supposed to also repair the fence. Those were the issues. It was, that was made before Judge Trabosh? That's correct. Okay. All right. So that will be reheard for 30 days if those uh, conditions are abated. Then okay. that will finalize that. The other issues were that Mr. Solinsky had here were the issues that were dating back to 1984 and the planning board, if you recall. And I reviewed the letter that you got from yes. Mr. Wood. What, what was it that Mr. Solinsky submitted to June? Were they, was that a resolution? It was a drawing of the original retaining wall that was supposed to be put up from one end of the property to the other end to keep his mountain right. in place. Do we, we don't have any, we haven't been able to find the original resolution? I don't think uh, June was able to locate So we don't have it. The letter came from Mr. Wood. Well, we do have the original, uh, we do have a, 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 a plan that was prepared by what your neighbor of what he was going to do? Yes, and it was submitted to me by Mr. Beatrice because at that time I couldn't get anybody to provide me with a drawing. So that we have that plan now? You should. Okay. 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 Well, you gave it to the Went to oh, you Mr. Wood. Okay. Right. Well, that's how pretty dates anybody on his board now. Yeah. Except me. What did Mr. Wood say? Uh, Mr. Wood just said uh, it appears from the materials for it to me that Mr. Maziotti didn't comply with the requirements as outlined in his application and is approved. As a result, he is in violation. Since he is in violation, he is subject to be cited. I am like, not quite sure which of you have the responsibility under these circumstances. The letter was addressed to Chris and Keith, uh, but we now have a complaint from a neighbor for someone who is not in compliance that we need to address. So I guess the, the neighbor would have to be cited, and if all we have is the drawing, we don't have a final resolution. Can Judge we bring it back to Judge Trayvon? Yeah, Judge, Judge Trayvon would have to make a decision then. I mean, we would have to have testimony on our behalf, the boroughs, that, you know, it doesn't look like it's in compliance with the plan, but we don't have the old resolution. Well, can we just cite him and see if he complies? Well, exactly, because as, as, as Judge Trabosh indicated on Monday night, he cannot make a decision until I cite something right. and bring him here. Right, let's just cite him. That would be the first step. I, I would, what I would do, Keith, I would get those plans from Mr. Wood that were submitted. Maybe you and Chris can look at it. You've already inspected the property. To a degree, yes. Yeah. So he's not compliant, so cite the gentleman. And does the gentleman have a copy still? Does he have a copy, sir? Yes, I do. No, no. I don't know your neighbor. Does he yes, still have a yeah. copy of the original plan? No, I do. Well, then why don't we make sure he gets a copy of it? Basic. Okay, he gets a copy of it. And he might be very willing to just make this go away. And you say, okay, here's the copy. I have to put a retaining wall up. Okay, it's going to cost me, you know, $800. I'll be done with this. He may be very willing to make it go away. We have to do realize that that tree is going to land in my yard for three months. Well, he's been sighted now, so he knows he knows he's on the radar. He, he's I, don't, the radar. I don't think that happened on the Mr. Trebosh's uh, watch either. No. It was probably not. It might have been a positive Dan, word. Dan, Dan, Dan something. Sort of. <laughs> Dan, he's a deep shamber. Dan Zonies? Zonies, yeah. Yeah. So why don't we just go back? Yeah. Now, that, he, he followed, I think, right. to sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so we agree so we just will cite him, give him a copy of the original drawing, and then if Nick has the Judge Trebosh has to be brought into it, then at that point we bring him into it, right? Well, yeah, then the judge will know that the man was given an opportunity based on the plans that were submitted. Obviously, you said they were his plans, sir. They, uh, Mr. Beatrice provided them to me. He said they were the plans that were submitted to. Okay. All right. All right. That's the, fine. the problem is that. I don't really want to keep this a whole lot uh, because survivors are. But his dirt is washing down on my property. I, and I, I actually put cinder blocks there to try and keep it. But now the ivy's grown over the top of that. I because understand. you know what? 
let, let the borough try and do what they can. Sure. Happy to do what sure. I can do, first of all, need the documentation that he submitted to from Mr. Wood. Yeah. And then after I Right, that, yeah, that's the way. Just call Mr. Wood up give me the documentation. You get the documentation, and then, as with anything, I'll seek voluntary compliance yeah. from Mr. Masiotti. Exactly. And if he comes up with a reasonable time frame to come yeah, apparently you didn't get the one tree out. Uh, they came today to give the him an estimate. Okay. And Mr. Masiotti is supposed to have it cleared up in a month. Okay. And the tree people said they can't get to it until the end of the month. So it's kind of a I'm awesome. sure I'll be back on Judge Graybach's docket and then okay. see what happens. I, I do appreciate everything that you're doing. No, no problem at all, sir. Because I, I faced the planning board before and, and like I might as well stood outside. I'm in here with you, so I appreciate it. No problem at all, sir. Thank you for coming Thank out. You for appreciate you know. it. Oh, you're welcome. Take care. Take care, care sir. Okay, I'll follow up. Thank you, Mr. Knight. Thank you. Good night, Jim. Good night. Do we have a motion? No, Any, anybody else uh, wishing to speak in the public? That's first, that's, that's first, close the public version. Motion? Motion. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Mrs. Gush and second by Mr. Fulton to close the Food and Welfare. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right, we have anything else to discuss this evening? Motion to adjourn? Second. All right, Mr. Dickinson seconded by Mr. Ockley. Thank you.